Imagine a future where all children, families and communities live free from man-made toxic chemicals linked to developmental defects, fertility problems or cancer. Where all children are born healthy without hundreds of toxic chemicals lurking in their bodies. Where people from all countries recognize dangerous chemicals and know their true and potential health effects eliminating them without concern for borders or the short-term economic interests of industry. And where we live in a healthful environment with clean soil, water and air, where just living poses no danger. Imagine a future free of toxics that harm our health and our environment. Every day people unknowingly expose themselves to toxic chemicals. They are in your water, on the ground, inside your house, in products, on your clothes and in your food. You've heard of arsenic, lead, mercury and cyanide. But the most insidious chemicals are called persistent organic pollutants, also known as POPs. Persistent organic pollutants. They are persistent because these chemicals don't easily break down in nature, resisting time, wind, water and sun. They are organic and their chemical structure causes them to stick to certain substances in nature, most notably fatty tissues. As plants and animals down the food chain are exposed, these chemicals pile up, getting into our food and into our bodies, and ultimately exposing humans to some of the highest toxic concentrations. They are pollutants because they contaminate everything and are very difficult to clean up. POPs are everywhere. Because of their structure, POPs are good at disrupting natural systems in our bodies, even at low dose levels. As they persist in nature, more and more people will experience their negative health effects, such as endocrine diseases, cancers, fertility problems, birth defects and developmental diseases in children. Eliminating persistent organic pollutants is one of the most important challenges of our time. And the exposures are all around us. A child's first dose of POPs comes from its mother. The fat in breast milk carries a mother's accumulated stores of toxic chemicals into her child. So where do POPs come from? Most of the product of human industry. Some are pesticides, others are flame retardants, still others are byproducts of incineration or industrial processes. Many POPs were banned in the 70s and 80s after scientists, industries and governments realized their hazardous effect on human health. Some are still in widespread use. One huge concern is the toxic legacy of past POPs use. Persistent organic pollutants can evaporate from soils, travel through the air and then condense in colder regions, sometimes jumping over oceans and mountain ranges. Because of weather and diet, Arctic peoples have suffered some of the worst health effects of POPs on fertility and endocrine diseases. But people all over the world have been affected, most notably women, children, workers and indigenous people. Persistent organic pollutants don't care if you're rich or poor, of one nationality or another. The question is, how do we eliminate them? A major step in removing persistent organic pollutants from the world was an international agreement between over 150 countries known as the Stockholm Convention. In effect, since May 2004, this global treaty originally identified 12 chemicals for reduction and elimination with a mechanism to add more substances. However, it is up to non-governmental organisations to ensure that the treaty is being enforced and to see that currently polluted sites are cleaned up. IPEN is at the forefront of this effort, with a global network of organisations working for toxic elimination in over a hundred countries, IPEN is leading the way towards the global elimination of POPs. At IPEN, we reach out around the globe to organisations that are working for a toxic-free future. We collaborate with UN agencies, governments and public interest groups, 
In total, our network encompasses over 700 organizations in more than 100 countries working to solve different problems related to human health and the environment. IPEN can be summed up by our four strategies. We connect, collaborate, contribute, and create change for local communities. From the grassroots organizations up to the global discussions and back again, IPEN strengthens the ability and capacity of citizens to protect their communities from the threats of POPs. and collectively acts as a watchdog to the Stockholm Convention, urging governments and the international community to eliminate POPs. IPEN is leading the way toward a world free of toxics, but we all need to do our part. The elimination of POPs is a human challenge.